Hello friends. Today we will be discussing and designing the structure of dielectric resonator antennas. So as the name suggests, these kind of antennas are not using any connective body to radiate the range of frequencies that we want as an application in which these kind of antenna uses a high dielectric material which can be of different shapes and sizes and it can it can produce the same amount of performance that we observe from the other conductive bodies or conductive antennas but in an efficient manner so these antennas are quite uh, efficient compared to the other conductive or lossy uh, structures at higher frequency specifically but these antennas are also used for some lower frequency applications because of some advantages and here we will be discussing the brief uh, about the rectangular structure uh, the short form of dielectric resonator antennas is DRA so we will be using this uh, term so we will be designing a rectangular DRA for which we need to understand what are some of the basics about this type of antenna and the shape of this antenna so for that we can refer to this book which is dielectric resonator antenna by these authors so here in this book we will go to this page specifically which discusses about the rectangular DRA and the basics about that which resembles to a dielectric waveguide model out of which they have uh, derived the equation the design equation for this kind of antenna and here we will see how to find out the resonant frequency of a particular rectangular DRA which has a length width as well as height so here is the formula where we will have the F naught which is the resonant frequency that we want to calculate and this is the capital F which is called normalized frequency so to have this normalized frequency first let, let us like discuss this example as the authors has given here like they have taken a DRA which has the epsilon r uh, of 10 and the dimensions of 10 mm each like the length width as well as height and here we can see a is equal to b as well as d by b is 1 so uh, they are referring to this figure in which they have shown a curve where we need to refer like a is equal to b which is a curve with the circular points and d by b is 1 so d by b is 1 a is equal to b it uh, corresponds to 5 so capital F has a value of 5 and with that if you put all these values here small a epsilon r c is the speed of light as well as capital F we'll get F naught which comes to be around 7.55 so it means that when this sized DRA which is 10 by 10 by 10 is excited and it will resonate at 7.55 gigahertz or uh, around that so this is just the basic you can refer to this whole book to understand more about DRA and the structures different shapes and how the analysis can go forward so we'll start with the design first we'll refer this paper to design the antennas mentioned in this paper and uh, this is just a structure with dual band rectangular DRA for WLAN applications by these authors so here we can see this is the final structure the authors have proposed and we'll simply start with the designs here so we'll start with this basic design which is just a basic TRA structure then we'll also try to implement this one and to compare the results that what the authors have observed with their work and what we will design what will be the results then so for, uh, for that we have to refer all the dimensions and everything from this paper so we'll be using all this all these dimensions and everything although there is one point that I want to make is that the authors have just mentioned that the DRA that they have used is having the epsilon r or the dielectric constant to be 30 apart from that they haven't mentioned the other properties of the DRA which is like one of the important one is the loss tangent so they have never they haven't mentioned and plus they haven't mentioned the material also whether it, it is a oxide magnesium oxide or is it a ceramic material or is it some some other material so they haven't mentioned the type of material here so i'll just assume the type of material to be a ceramic uh, material or it can be a magnesium oxide and i'll define the other properties or the other parameters uh, compared to the other materials available 
uh, as per the information available online. So I'll start with the design. So we'll have the HFSS window here. We'll, we are having a new project. We'll just insert an HFSS design here to get the workspace. So we'll zoom out this workspace to get to that point where we can insert a design and it can be visible clearly. So the overall substrate size in the paper was like 50 by 50 mm that is of the substrate so we'll create the substrate first and the substrate they used uh, was fr4 so we'll also use the fr4 substrate initially we can have any dimension and afterwards we'll change the dimensions here and the substrate thickness is 1.6 so this is the substrate now we will create a ground plane on the bottom side of the substrate it should be on the bottom side shows the z axis should be 0 50 by 50 that's it so the ground is also defined now to assign the material uh, we have to create the material here as the authors have mentioned so we have to have the value of relative permittivity which is epsilon r to the 30 and here i'm taking the electric loss tension to be 0 0.5 and let us term this material as high dielectric material HD30 to just find out uh, this material in the list of all the materials for the future designs so I'll use this so it is as the 30 the crown plane should be perfect E and then we have to define the microstrip line here DRA can be fed via a coaxial feed a microstrip line uh, and a slot coupled or an aperture coupled feed so there are various methods or even the capacitive kind of coupling feed so here we will be using a microstrip feed on the top of the substrate which has the dimensions as to be its length should be 33 and the thickness or the width should be 2.9 and it should be on the top of the substrate and here we can see it's not in the center so we have to move it should be on the six and we have to move a little bit for it to be in the center now we will proceed with the creation of the DRA material so here we'll see that we have to create a box again here initially we'll create the box just randomly and then we'll assign the dimensions so the box dimensions are like that in x direction it is 20 in y direction it is 18 and z direction it is 15 now we have to place it like that the field should be underneath the uh, geometry so we have to place it like this to the center of the substrate and it should be moved a little bit here as well as thirteen and one point six. Okay, so we have to see whether it's in the center or not, so we can simply make this box transparent from its properties and now we can simply see if the box is in the center yes it's almost in the center so now what we have to do we have to excite the microstrip line so for that we can see that this is the yz axis so here we have to change it to yz and then we have to create a rectangular structure to assign it as a lumped point so here we'll create it and we will have it here this is the structure and now it can be this okay so we have to assign firstly the microstrip line to be E perfect E and then this geometry to be excited by a lumped port so here we have to define an integration line it should start from one edge to the other edge so it's defined now the final task is to create a 
radiation box or air box which we call it prop properly so we'll create a box we'll create a box around the antenna to analyze the structure so initially it can be of any size and furthermore we can modify it so it has to be 80, 80 and let it be 70 and this can be here and we can simply make this box, box also transparent first of all this has to be FR4 and this has to be the new material that we created done then this has to be radiation box firstly we will see its, its position whether it is around the antenna equally so we can modify a little okay it's fine here x y and z it is all good so now it should be assigned with a radiation boundary so assign boundary and which that's it so now we just have to see only analysis setup is left to be done so we'll have the solution this antenna structure will be analyzed from the frequency range between 2 to 6 so we'll give the higher highest frequency to have the finer mesh and this can be 20 to get finer mesh it can be 0 0.0 so this is the setup we will uh, we can simply have a frequency sweep inserted 2 to 6 fast sweep to calculate it quicker and these much frequency points to have it analyzed analyze on these frequency points so this is it the design as well as these analysis setup we have completed it and in the next video we will analyze the results of this antenna so thank you very much for watching kindly like subscribe comment whatever your feedback is about this channel and other videos again thank you very much